I know that you guys recently raised some capital. Can you mm -hmm. just uh, take me through the experience um, of that? You know, what were the sort of major challenges that you faced um, going through that? So raising capital is always a roller coaster. I think you start out um, every time we've raised, you start out with certain expectations, and some of them hold true and some of them don't. We were lucky in that this round was um, actually came together really nicely. It was. It was really interesting for me to contrast it with the first time we raised money, mm -hmm. because when I originally started The Muse in late 2011, I couldn't find an investor to save my life. I was, you know, I felt like I was walking around New York, um, mm -hmm. talking to everyone, going to every pitch event. I kept a spreadsheet of everyone I was talking to, and we were turned down 148 times. And then slowly, um, you know, you find that one person who buys in, and then the next. Um, we got into Y Combinator after that, and that really opened up a bunch of doors. And so by the time we got to this round, you know, being able to go to investors and say 30,000 to 100,000 people per day are visiting themuse.com, this is the revenue we're making, these are the metrics we're seeing, the engagement, the traction, um, it was a really different conversation. Ultimately, it's also about finding someone who shares your vision. So um, I remember once pitching someone who had invested in a daily deal site and he's like, this is amazing. You're going to do a job every day via email. And this will be a massive company, and I'm really excited. Ultimately, you know, that could be a really interesting business, but that's not our business. So mm -hmm. for me, that was a sign that it probably wasn't the right investor. Um, it's also really interesting with the fundraising process. It gives you a really great kind of opportunity to reach out to people that have a lot of expertise in your industry. So one of the first people we talked to was Chris Hermanson who is the former European president of TMPMonster.com, massive uh, HR company. And he's really seen you know, a lot of the innovations in our space over the mm -hmm. last decade. As soon as we sat down with them, he looked at what we were doing with the Muse and said, this is where the industry is going, and, you know, and I'm in. And so not only did he invest, um, he joined our board. He's been very involved in helping us think through some of our channel sales strategies. Mm -hmm. And once we were able as well to get industry investors on board, a lot of other technology investors looking at the metrics combined with that, got very excited. What sort of advice would you give somebody um, just starting that whole process? Were there things that you particularly thought, wow, I just really wish someone had told me that going in? Other entrepreneurs and other founders are your best source of investor leads. I found um, some of the most interesting people we talked to came from reaching out to founders that I knew, getting their recommendations, mm -hmm. because they also, they were able to tell me ahead of time, you know, this guy is a numbers guy. You know, this uh -huh. woman deeply mm -hmm. cares about these industries or these verticals. And it helps you tailor your pitch because, you know, the Muse is my baby. I mm -hmm. could talk about it for hours and I could tell people about, you know, everything that we do. But ultimately, mm -hmm. the most concise pitch often focuses on a couple threads mm -hmm. of where we're going. Um, and so having that context before you go into a meeting with an investor can be mm -hmm. really helpful. W were there major differences raising capital here in New York City compared to um, over in, you know, Silicon Valley? Yeah, we found that investors were, to some extent, looking for slightly different things in uh -huh. New York versus Silicon Valley. Right. As a company, The Muse has spent time in both. So we were founded in New York City, we moved to the Valley for Y Combinator, and then after um, really about seven months in California, we came back. And so we have investors on both coasts. What's been interesting to me, so one thing is I think, um, in my experience at least, New York investors are a little bit more concerned with um, your revenue model, your actual revenue, you know, how much money you're making, they want you to make money. We did have a lot of investors in Silicon Valley tell us, stop charging for your product, give it away for free, mm -hmm. worry about money later on. Um, I think in some industries that makes a lot of sense, but in HR and recruiting where companies have dedicated budgets, if you give them a free product, you have no way of knowing whether they actually value it. And when I looked at, you know, I think the startup landscape is littered with dead job startups. So I always look at them, you know, mm. what did they do that we want to avoid? And one of the classic situations is giving something away for free, and then eventually when they do start charging, they learn all sorts of mm -hmm. questions, complaints, problems, et cetera, that their customers have um, that they never heard. Because, you I know, see. when there's not money on the table, people don't tell you no, uh, they don't push back in the same way. So uh, that's something where I, I definitely, I think, pushed back a little bit on, on some of the West Coast investors that we spoke to. There's a lot of really interesting investors on both coasts, and we have some that we didn't even approach for this round because of the size we were looking for mm -hmm. um, that are on my short list for the next. Mm -hmm. But um, for us, I think for the business that we were trying to build, New York just made more sense.